Hello there, my name is Mr. Abaya and today we're going to be uh, doing a bit of mat chat to get things started. Um, hello to everybody that's um, seeing this live right now. Um, and whoever's seeing this in the future, be sure to um, you know, uh, like, our, uh, like our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube, uh, YouTube channel. Leave a comment below to let us know what you guys are thinking about. Um, and also be sure to uh, be training along with us. Um, send us videos to make sure that we're, um, uh, we know that you guys are training. Um, and also, you know, we want to check in with you guys. We're, you guys are all at home and we want to make sure that you guys are doing the best that you are. Um, and yeah, it's been a long time since I've done this, but I, I'm glad that I'm able to give Matt chat this time around. Um, to, today, the word of the month is ethics, as you guys know. Um, and part of that is knowing how to do the right thing on your own. Uh, as we're doing our training, our exercise, we have to be very cognizant of um, how much effort we're putting in, right? Your parents should be helping you guys out uh, as you guys are training at home. Uh, they have 100% permission to uh, help you guys out, give you advice, um, and help you train. Also to give you guys a second, uh, second set of eyes to make sure that as you're training with your bows today that you're not hitting anything around you accidentally. Um, also, be sure to, um, you know, treat each other with respect as well. Uh, make sure that you're treating your bows with respect. Don't just be throwing them around the house. Um, and train as if you are in the studio with us, um, because we're obviously in the studio right now, and we want you guys to be in that same mindset. You know, even if you want to put on your uniform, we highly recommend it, so that you, by the time you guys get back here, you know how to practice. Um, let me see, I gotta zoom in a little bit closer to see who's, who's watching, let's see. Okay, on, Liam, hello Liam. Root Sparkles, awesome, awesome. Got seven people watching right now, a bit more time until we start class. If anyone is, um, uh, if you guys are all here, just make sure that you're writing down your names and we'll uh, stamp off your cards, make sure you guys get that class credit. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions too, we have our YouTube channel posting videos. Uh, this will be up on the YouTube channel uh, in a bit, um, as well as any and all uh, videos of that sort uh, uh, as reference. I know we have, um, for uh, basic students, we have our uh, hand combination video out, kicking progressions for intermediate and advanced students as well. So that being said, my eyesight is uh, going bad. I'm trying to see everybody over here. Ah! Oh. <laughs> Hello there, Kayon. It's Dylan, I see you over there. Caleb as well. Oh my goodness, you guys are awesome. Make sure that you're treating each other right, too. I know we're all kind of close together right now, so make sure you're not whacking anybody with your bows. Um, and yeah, it's fun seeing you guys. But yeah, with that being said, just about time. Two more minutes? Two more minutes. All you. right, cool. All right. I'll be hiding in the chat room as well. So if anyone has any questions, I'll be over here. All right, guys. Well, thank you, Mr. Baya, for the, uh, the introduction. Right? We're uh, slowly but uh, surely evolving to, uh, to be better, uh, better for you guys, our students, uh, to be able to serve you better, um, and uh, to be able to connect with you guys. Again, as Mr. Baya said, uh, we are very lonely without you. Okay, uh, I know my world, speaking for myself, uh, feels completely different, uh, not being able to see you guys, uh, but knowing that you're out there, knowing that you're watching me, uh, really helps me. It helps to give me purpose, guys, and I appreciate that. So uh, as Mr. Abaya said, if you have somebody around that's able to, uh, to watch, okay, um, that's very helpful because they help to keep us accountable. All right, it is easy to allow us to or allow ourselves to relax. It's easy to uh, to not give our all, but that's detrimental, meaning that that's harmful. All right, our goal is not to be the most mediocre person. I hope our goal is to be the best us, the best you that you can be. And, and so, in order to do that, sometimes you need to have that accountability. Okay, as Mr. Abaya said, parents have a full full uh, well right to, you know, give out push-ups, <laughs> right, to, uh, to make you do it again, you know, if that just wasn't good enough, do it again, because they know you better than anybody, and they know when you want something and you're determined, they know what you will do when you really want it, 
okay? But it's like a switch. We've got to learn to turn that switch on and recognize that what we really want, we put in all of our effort, our true effort, okay? Not just that effort that's on the surface that uh, gets us by. Like, oh, if, as long as I put in that much, people will kind of leave me alone. That's not enough. It's not for them, okay? It's for you. It's a journey of discovery about yourself, uh, about being more, okay? More today than you were yesterday, more tomorrow than you are today. So keep that in mind, guys. And again, um, students, make sure that you are respecting, as Mr. Abaya said, uh, your parents, their directions and authority in your home, okay? As well as a martial artist, okay? As a martial artist, they have my uh, permission to give you com uh, comments and critiques. And so the reason I'm saying that is because I know that uh, sometimes, uh, you know, seasoned martial artists, they say things like, Oh, mom, you don't know what you're talking about. But the truth is quiet, okay? Your moms and your dads know more than you understand, okay? They can see it. They can understand it. Maybe even a little bit better than you. So they can help you, okay? They can help you. And that's important to be humble enough to allow yourself to be helped, okay? But not to be so, um, so high and mighty that you think that, that somebody is not able to give you help. Okay, your parents can help you. Please let them. Okay, uh, and again, parents, keep, uh, keep them safe. Keep them in line, please. All right, we're going to get started, guys. Everyone, chumbi position. Everyone, chumbi. Yup. Young man. Chumbi. All right, guys, so for some of you, hopefully you're still standing in chumbi. Some of you, this may be your, your first class in this format. Uh, for some of you, this is your second class. So you've done this before. However, I want to remind you the importance of perfect practice, okay, and personal responsibility, okay? As I'm not physically there with you to watch your chumbi position, you have to recognize your self-control is either being improved or it is not. You're either getting closer to your goal or you are not, and that's a personal choice. We all have lots of stuff going on, but we have to be able to focus our body. Control yourself, guys. All right, stand relaxed. Thank you, sir. All right, let's get a warmed up. What I want you to do is start with both hands on the bow, right hand palm up, left hand palm down. We're having a bit of audio issues uh, real fast. Let's see, let's see. Sorry, technical difficulties. Yes. Can that's you guys why, hear us at all? That's why I've got Mr. Abai here, because he'll, he'll fix it for us. Okay, if you're there, just follow along. Right, if you can't hear us, just follow along. All right, switch. Turn the other hand up, flip it over. And go ahead and go to one hand and over and back. and see if you can see and hear it. And switch, other hand. I hear it on my phone, but I can't really hear it from. This could be bandwidth. If you can hear it on your phone, it's going through. Hopefully everybody can hear us. Uh, again, I apologize about technical difficulties. But, um, you know, even if, uh, if you can't hear me, hopefully you are following along, right? As we do class, I will be the leader. You guys just do your best and follow along. And stop. Okay, take your left hand, put your left hand up on the top of the bow, and turn the bow out to the side without hitting anything up and over. Okay, stretch out your wrist. You're going to do for eight count. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. One, and loosen the fingers, drape it under that arm, curl your fingers down, lift up to the ceiling. And guys, if you could, just to help Mr. Abaya out here, uh, help our, our staff, our school out here, uh, if you can't hear me, please uh, just uh, post something in the comments. Let me know uh, that you can hear me. If you can't, well, do the same. I appreciate it. Thank you. And everybody bring your bow down and reach up, grab the bow at the top, and here. So your arms kind of draped over your bow this way. 
Now I would like to take a second while we're stretching to, to let you guys know uh, that if you didn't get a chance to grab your bow from the school and you want to bring it home, uh, please just let us know. Uh, send us a message and uh, we'll be happy to coordinate uh, some way for you to, to get your bow. Um, be happy to bring it by, uh, drop it off if you need, um, so that you can practice, so you get the opportunity to, uh, to utilize this. Okay, and go ahead and let it down. Shake that arm out just a little bit. And take your other hand, top of the bow, palm facing this way, and turn it up, and flip it over, grab, and pull. One, and lift the hand up, tuck it under the arm, grab, lift to the ceiling, push, 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 there you go, clench those fingers. Four, three, two, one, and bring it down in front of you. Reach up, grab the bow up high, and pull it down. Okay, again, you're torquing that arm up just a little bit, stretching your shoulder. And let's go for five, four, three, two, one, and go ahead and let it down. All right, shake out your arm just a little bit. Okay, so uh, what we're gonna do first today is we're working that stretch, working moving the bow over your hand and back, and so we're gonna work into some hand rolls. Okay, now hand roll is a simple, now freeze, stop. Hopefully you can hear me, please stop. Uh, I want you to, again, examine your surroundings, okay? Um, be extra cautious, be extra careful. This is a technique, I promised parents that I wasn't gonna do any releases, we're not gonna throw it. So if you want to be extra cautious, you can even use your, extra, your other hand as a guide, right? By bringing the bow around and into your hand, right? It's stable and it's safe. And then I can go back the other way, okay? But I don't want you just to fling it and kind of let, let it go, okay? Be in control of your weapon and focus on turning it, opening your hand, letting it sit on your hand, and then grabbing it from the other side. Go back the other way. Turn the bow, open your hand, and then grab it on the other side. Back, open, uh-oh, I got stuck a little faster. Grab, and back, grab, and back, grab. Good. Now, uh, we're working our bow today, and so we're practicing this as a bow technique. But could you do this with an Arnie stick? Absolutely. Could you do this with nunchaku? Absolutely, right? This uh, kind of hand roll that we call it is a very universal technique, okay? Good for coordination. All right, at some point you get comfortable with it, don't try it right away, but you know, even with eyes closed, I can feel the bow. I have control of the bow within the pressure on my hand. I can sense it, I can feel it. And so I know right where the release and the catch is, even though I'm not throwing it to release and catch, I'm just slightly releasing and catching. And like I say, this skill will build so that when you do have the opportunity, okay, maybe when we're back here in the studio next, or maybe you go outside, you're out enjoying the park, and you work on just that little, little toss, but it all starts with this hand roll motion here. So let's try it on the other hand, okay? Put the bow in your other hand, and go ahead and flip it over one way, and flip it over back. Flip it over one way, and flip it back. Flip it over one way. Oops, turn the volume up on my computer. And back. Flip it over one way. And back. One way. Don't need to get so. And back. Not me. I hear myself. And back. Over. And back. Good. Okay. Hopefully you're getting the hang of it. Again, I wanted just to do it with one hand to work on that dexterity and that control. Um, if at a different time we want to practice, or you want to practice a two-handed hand roll, as I was showing it before, I, I often call this the pancake method, because you take one hand, if this hand starts palm down, this hand is palm up, and I take it, and I pancake it. 
right to my hand. Again, that keeps control. This hand is on bottom, the bow is in the middle, this hand is on top. So they're together. And then from there, well, as the bow rolls, I just kind of guide it into my hand. And then I could do it back the other way, where now, because this hand is palm up, I push it and pancake it, and then I let it continue to roll, and I grab. And then I grab. And see, so it goes a little faster once I feel comfortable here, and I have control here, I have control here. Because instead of stopping on each motion, I just let it transition a little smoother. So the hand that pushes up pancakes it to here. Okay, and uh, just to, to step forward to show you, you could even do that with something like a figure eight, right? Figure eight, and you have one hand, pancake it to the other hand, and then you grab and you move. And so that's a method of getting your figure eight hand rolls, okay? Okay, uh, so moving on, we did our hand roll this way, and actually, if you've been following along with the Black Belt Club bow curriculum, the very first level is uh, horizontal hand rolls, okay? Horizontal, think like the horizon, think side to side. Uh, this one proves challenging for some people as, well, some people's arms aren't as long and their bow ends up hitting them. So just a small adjustment, and I'll show you that in a second. But in essence, what we're doing now is instead of pushing one hand up and one hand down, okay, vertical, up and down, we're doing that motion like sideways or horizontally. So now one hand's pushing forward and out, the other hand is pulling back. Right about here is that pancake motion, and then I end up grabbing. So if I come from this side, I push this hand out, it rolls over this hand, and then I catch it. Notice as I do it, even myself, I'll give some space so that I can get the bow to clear so it doesn't hit me in my legs. Okay, uh, two more adjustments that you can make. Uh, number one, horizontal is straight, side to side, but if you slightly angled up, right? It's not exactly perfectly horizontal, but as close as you can get. Remember what we always say, just do your best. And so if it's just slightly up, it makes it so this end doesn't hit you. Slightly up. Oh, look at that. I didn't even have to hop my hips back because the angle's not here. It's just up and down a little more. That's one way that you can make an adjustment to get your horizontal handle. The other one is understanding um, you can use a shorter end as you come through so it doesn't hit you. What I mean by that is if I started on this end of my bow and I tried to roll it, this end, you can see it's super long, it's going to hit me for sure. If I start way out here, this end clears and I can get it around just a little easier. So again, if you just start with the short end, you can at least get that first part to clear so that you're not getting hit. And that helps you with your hand roll. Okay? So everybody, real quick, go ahead and turn around and fix yourself. Say, thank you, sir. So here we go, moving on. Okay, big motion with our figure eight. So make sure you're clear and understand guys that if you are ready to advance the technique because your skill shows that you're ready. Think about what I just said. If you're ready to advance the technique because your skill shows that you're ready, not your head says you want to. Understand the difference there, guys. Be responsible. We always want to go to the most advanced thing, uh, but sometimes that makes us bite off more than we can chew, causes frustration. That's not what you want, okay? Stay where you are. Figure eights are great technique. I'll probably do this the whole time. And forward figure eights, but if your skill calls for it and you can just as easily come into your upside down figure eights, well, go ahead and do so, okay? And on your own, you can continue to practice both of them. But for now, let's go one hand, let's go left hand, forward figure eight. 
Notice there is a little motion of my body. Rather than doing all of this with your arm, relax and move your body. Okay? Relax your hips, twist your shoulders. Okay? This uh, fluidity or circular motion is very important when you're doing something like a, like a wrist twist. You might not see it, but that quick turn is going to help to give you the power. So make sure you feel it. And go ahead and go to two hands now. So whether it's two hand forward, like you're rowing a boat this way, or maybe you're doing two hands upside down. All right, let's keep them going, keep them strong. And we're gonna get right to that other hand. Ready, set, and switch, don't stop. Now, speaking about angling or moving your body, sorry, moving your body, uh, if your body is like at the corner, 45, if you will, it's easier to rotate than if I were to go straight. If my shoulders are square, it means I'm wide. It means it's harder to get the bow around me. If my shoulders are more turned, now my body is, sometimes we'll say knifed or bladed, angled like this. And so therefore, it's more narrow. Much easier to avoid hitting yourself when your body is narrow and small. Think about that concept when it comes to fighting, right? When you fight, do you give them that big target? Ugh, ugh, ugh. Or do you angle and blade your body so that you don't get hit as much because you're smaller, right? Think about that. Everything that we do is connected, guys. And time, bring it under your arm, and turn around and fix. Thank you, sir. And stand relaxed. Okay, so when we work our basic strikes, remember that we'll use two stances. Uh, the defensive stance is called a dog stance. We call it a dog. No, it's not a dog. It's a chicken stance. Chicken stance? No, no, no. Cat stance. That's right. Cat stance. All right. Cat stance is when I, I slide to where the front foot is nice and light. And in fact, I'm on the ball of my foot, like I'm front kicking, right? My foot's arched like that should be able to see my heel up off the floor. And uh, does anybody remember how much of our weight is on our back leg? How much weight's on your back leg? Like 90%. So much so that in a cat stance, you should always be able to pick up your front foot. So when we're done doing this, your leg's gonna burn. And it's okay, because you can uh, post in the comments, tell me all about it, okay? And I'll be happy to know that you're getting a good workout. Okay, so from our fighting stance, yell, yeah! Everybody, slide into your cat stance. We'll start our blocks here. I want a double low block. Ready? One. And double low block again. Two. Double low. Three. Four. Yell. Pick up your front foot. Okay. Still light. High block. One. Two. Three. Four. Pick up your front foot. Still light. Okay, good, because that back leg's burning. I know you're doing it right here, guys. All right, so here we go. Now we're going to take it and we're going to do our inside block. Okay, so inside block towards your other leg. Ready, and block one. Ready, block two. Block three. Block four. Pick up your front foot. Ah, good job. Stay there. I know I got it with you guys. Here we go. Block yell. Ah, yeah! Go to the other side. Other hand on top. Bring it back. Block. Bring it back. Block. Bring it back and yell. Ah, yeah! And back. Now shake out your legs. All right, guys. Well done. Good job. Okay. So with our blocks, we're coming back into a cat stance. So as a standalone drill that you can practice, try to work on a 
slide into your cat stance. From this motion, pick up your back leg, step forward, or excuse me, step backwards, then slide back again into a cat stance. Step, slide. Step, slide. Step, slide. Step, slide. One more. Step, slide. Now, as you go offense when you're attacking, now we're going to go into a front stance, but not a traditional front stance. Let's see that reach. Careful of your surroundings, but let's see you reach with your strike. Prepare the bow to your shoulder and give me an overhead strike. Ready? One. Push. Now prepare, and I want you to get ready to push off again. Prepare. So we have to actually move our weight from our front leg, bring it back. Now push. It's almost like a lunge. Ready? Again. Push. And yell. Aya! Good. Targeting right to the top of your head. The outside of the bow when you strike comes right to the side of your form. Okay? Moving on. Back up a little bit. And now let's go overhead straight into the uppercut. So we prepare here. We step forward overhead. Now don't forget to move forward. Ready? Uppercut. Move forward again. Overhead. Move forward again. Uppercut. Move forward again. Overhead. Move forward again. Uppercut. Overhead and yell. Aya! Very good. Okay, now back up. Everyone run back, run back fast, run back fast. From there, the last two strikes are horizontal strikes. So we already covered the horizontal plane, right? And all we're doing is we're just striking one side, other side. Sometimes I call them cross strikes because you're striking across your body like that. Okay, but keep them nice and uh, straight. Remember that when you strike with one arm, you go to the outside of the other forearm. Okay, so not under your arm like this. Don't put your elbow down. It's not a, you know, something like this, but it's outside. Got it? All right, so we are doing horizontal strikes. Start with the bow at your shoulder and step forward, overhead strike. Lift up the foot, uppercut. Now from here, we're still going to move forward. First horizontal strike. Move forward. One. Now move forward again, horizontal. Two. Good job. Now from here, to give us a little room, let's move back into our cat stance. Ready? High block. Move back again. Low block. Move back again. Inside block. Move back again. Outside block. Move forward. Overhead. Front stance. Uppercut. Front stance. Cross or horizontal strike one. Cross or horizontal strike two. Try to keep up. Move with me. Ready? High block. Shh. Low block, shh. inside block, shh. outside block, shh. overhead strike, shh. uppercut, shh. horizontal strike, shh. horizontal strike, shh. high block, shh. low block, inside block, outside block, overhead, uppercut, side, side, up, down, in, out, over, up, side, side. Thumbs up. You still with me? Great job. Ready? Hold the stance. Block. Shh. 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 Now do all four of the strikes fast. Go. Shh. 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 Aya. And pato. And relax. Thank you, sir. Double thumbs up. There they are. Uh, guys, great job. Uh, keep practicing the combination. Keep practicing the strikes for fluidity, for speed, uh, especially for that footwork. Okay? Um, that footwork will, will help you with lunging in sparring. Okay? Uh, as I spar, one of the, the best techniques that I feel I have is my ability to cover distance with a kick pushing off of my back leg. What is that motion called? That's right, it's called a lunge. And so in the same way, on our offensive strikes, we're pushing off of that back leg. But you gotta watch it, because if you feel, try to see if you see my feet here, uh, if you feel yourself do this, your back leg moves, 
Is that a lunge? No, that's a slide up. And that's the same thing we see in sparring. People want to slide to hit somebody. But what happens when you slide? They go, oh, they're trying to hit me. And they block. They're ready for it. You've telegraphed it. You've shown them what you're going to do. Where when you just jump in and kick, by the time they're processing, whoa, that person's really close to me. They're about to. Well, it already happened because you just hit them while they're thinking. That's the speed we need. And it comes from that utility of the lunge. Okay? So make that a, make that a fun contest or game. You know, we, in very basic levels, start with just one leg hopping. Balance. Got to have control. But now what if I took that one leg, I turned like sideways, angled my body, bladed my body so I don't jump into a kick to the stomach. And from that sideways position, I work on getting my farthest sideways one leg jump. That's a lunge, okay? It's just I broke it down in a different way. Uh, but recognize that because that's what we need to do. We, as we train, you have to understand that we want to train a lot of different attributes, okay, or skills. We cannot train them all at once. And that's important to understand because we know that speed is an important attribute. Is being fast important? Yes, for certain things. Being fast isn't always good, okay? Let me rephrase that. Uh, a great teacher once said, move quick, but don't rush, right? Do you understand? Speed is not just about doing and being sloppy. You want to improve speed, but if you're attempting to improve speed but you lose focus, that wasn't good. We can't, we can't lose things. We've got to be able to pick up an attribute, speed, without losing form. But all too often we see people rush because they're so focused on that attribute, speed, that they don't think anything about their focus, their balance, their control. Make sure you're thinking about all of those attributes and uh, spend time and recognize practicing individual attributes to build them up and that will build you up in the whole, okay? So let's move on. Let's go to our bow form, okay? Now, I wanted to give you guys a little extra today, but I know we're kind of getting a little close on time. So here's what I'll do and you guys can always just kind of come back to watch it. We're going to do basic bow form. And then after basic bow form, we're going to do bow hyung. Okay, so bow hyung is actually a level, level three requirement. Okay, uh, so for some of you, this is a, a big step and you're going to see a lot of new moves. Um, but I, I am enjoying that because you, you have the opportunity to be able to, to watch this again. So if you didn't understand it or you weren't able to pick it up right away, you have a tool. This is a tool, use this tool. And if for some reason the, the video quality doesn't come through as well as you would like it, let us know, okay? I'm gonna have the recording, I'll send it to you, okay? But you can use this as a tool to improve. But remember that improvement is your responsibility because now you have the way. And if you don't do it, well, who's, whose fault is that? Right? As Black Belt Club students, I am much more forward with you than I would be with, say, Little Dragons and Ninjas. You have made a commitment to Black Belt, right, Black Belt Club? Yes, sir! That's right, you've made a commitment. Okay, there were gonna be obstacles, we knew that. We couldn't have foreseen the obstacles, but hey, we knew there were gonna be obstacles. So continue to maintain your focus and your commitment to black belt and figure out the way to get things done because every task in martial arts as far as i see it and i know i've done it a long time it's pretty straightforward i can get you there but you have to put in something you got to put in work okay and you got to work a lot in this case you might have to watch the video four or five times that's okay you got nothing else to do right not much anyways prioritize guys here we go arms up everyone say basic nunchaku form sir just kidding. Say basic bow form, sir. Toes together and bow. And step out, flip your bow. Okay, so your right hand should be palm up, left hand palm down. Let's start with a good strong double low block to your left. Ready? And step, double low block, go. Now step and overhead strike with your right hand, go. 
Now half turn, good front stance, double low block, go. This strike's gonna be reversed, but nonetheless, step, hit with your right hand, strike. Look to the front, right here towards me, double low block, go. Overhead hit, one, good stance, don't rush. Move quickly though. Fold in two, fold and yell, Great, now remember you're going over your back shoulder. Look over your back shoulder, three quarter turn, double low block, go. And step and strike, go. Turn, double low block, go. Step and strike, go. All right, I'm gonna lose you here, but you're going over your front shoulder. Ready, double low block, go. Step in overhead, hit, one. Re-chamber, same arm, two. Re-chamber, yell, aya, aya. Three quarter turn over your back shoulder. Ready, turn and give me a front stance with a good pop, ready, turn, block. Straighten it out, strike. Turn and block. Last one, strike. And pato back under your arm and toes together, take it back. Very nice guys, uh, great job, well done. Turn around, fix yourself really quick. All right, guys, so again, I know I'm just about at time right now, uh, so I'm gonna demonstrate Bo Hyung. Any of you that are comfortable enough to follow along with me, go ahead. If not, maybe I can just uh, give you something to, to watch and give you some ideas, things to work on, something to strive for, okay? So here we go, my very best, left-handed. By the way, you do it right-handed, Bo Hyung. Tension. Down. Roll your bow. Hand comes down, we say, Bo Hyung, sir! I'm gonna crouch down and grab the bow, and I'm gonna press out into a front stance, and I'm gonna step forward overhead strike. Aya! I'm gonna step into a side stance, thrust. I'm gonna lift up and block my leg. Slide back into a cat stance, thrust. And I'm gonna block, and I'm gonna turn and block outside of my leg. Step out, overhead, hit, wind up, thrust. Slide back into a cat stance, outside block. I'm gonna pivot to the front, I'm gonna slide up and I'm gonna uppercut. And then I'm gonna lunge forward, overhead strike. One, come into a cat stance, outside block. Uppercut, two, lunge forward, strike. It's the same set that you just did. Block here, third time. Uppercut, lunge forward, strike. Slide back, block. We're gonna lift up, we're gonna block our leg again. Slide back and thrust, and then we're gonna step and we're gonna switch. We're gonna step out, strike. We're gonna step into a side stance, horizontal strike. Step across, again, horizontal strike. Turn, cat stance, block. Overhead strike and thrust. Aya! And then we putt up. We slide back with a block. We swing the bow down. And then we slide our left leg up to our right leg and take a bow. All right, guys. So uh, happy to, uh, to be able to offer that to you guys so you have something to work towards, something to work on, or something to continue to improve. Okay, before we finish up today, just wanna to remind you guys about a couple of things. Okay, uh, number one, um, as far as strike testing, I know that uh, many of you have been, uh, we've been asking, and, and even ourselves, we're kind of trying to work out how exactly it's gonna work, uh, but one uh, temporary uh, solution that we have is anybody that's interested in testing for their strike, uh, all you have to do is take a video of yourself doing your requirements, uh, minus the board breaking, okay? Um, but doing your requirements and uh, have mom or dad post it to their page and then have them tag the studio, okay? When they tag the studio, uh, that will be your submission of your strike test and we will contact you as soon as possible afterwards. 
okay? Um, also, don't forget uh, to, if, if you need your gear, okay, weapons or anything in the studio, uh, just let us know, shoot us a message, and we'll be here for you so you can come and grab it. Um, if you are interested in getting, if you need any kind of uh, targets or any kind of equipment, uh, let us know. Uh, we have uh, gear here that's, uh, as Mr. Abaya said, just kind of collecting dust, although it is uh, running a little shorter supply. So if you're interested in getting equipment, you want to order something, uh, let us know. We'd be happy to take care of you there too. Uh, if you have not signed up for our Remind app, please do so. Uh, we've just kind of split everybody into groups so that you won't be reminded about every single class, but uh, just hopefully your specific class there. And then if you haven't done so already, please like our Facebook page uh, so you continue to get updates from the school. All right, guys, thank you very much for being here today. If you have any questions, please let us know. Uh, we look forward to seeing those video uploads of you guys demonstrating your stripe testing requirements. Um, and uh, we, we look forward to your progress, guys. Keep up the hard work. Uh, recognize that too. Very honestly, remember when you turn in that submission, it doesn't have to be the first take, right? You understand what I'm saying, guys? When you test for a strike, usually it's like right here, right now, you gotta do it, okay? I want you to work up, get there, but stay there, okay? Work yourself up to where you get to that level, recognize the level that needs to be accomplished in order for you to move on, okay? But this also gives you a, a sense of self-feedback to watch what you're doing so that you can make improvements on your own. All right, again, any questions or comments, please let us know. Thank you guys for joining us today. Attention! Bow. Right hand over her. Say Tongsu! Virtual fist bump. Have a great day, guys.